right now we will have here the older man who's been in Ktemper Okrar for the longest time and he has led the councils for medicinal and recreational use of cannabis and he was key for the 2010 presentation. Here we have with the social and government impact in a city that has legalized cannabis. Charlie Brown, welcome to Costa Rica. You have the floor. I was elected in 2001 and I can assure you I had no idea that I would spend four years dealing with medical marijuana, much less retail marijuana. It was a big surprise, but the voters spoke. They went to the legislature. The legislature didn't want to deal with the issue. So they did what is known in Colorado as a public initiative. They put it on the ballot. And in 2010, it passed. That was medical marijuana. And so someone had to regulate it. And that's what I did. I was in charge of the committee. The committee consists of all the members of the city council. And the mayor, of course, was involved. It's a great quote from the New York Times, uh, Frank. Uh, he's a columnist now there. Colorado's going to pot. It's just having a tough time figuring out how, which was very true. And as I said, this did not come from the legislature. It came directly from the people. Uh, it was tried several times. It failed, but in, in the year 2000, it finally was adopted. Ten years after we passed it, uh, the federal government issued a memo saying that prosecuting states with medical marijuana would be their lowest priority, meaning they were going to turn their back and actually accept the will of the voters. That was key because we were, it was really kind of in dormant, if you will, for a decade. And then once they did that, watch out. The horses are out of the barn. And frankly and candidly, we were not ready for it. We saw dispensaries popping up all over our city, some in actually in neighborhoods, some next to schools, some next to daycare centers. And then we started getting calls, i.e. city council members started getting calls from the people because they didn't like what they saw. On the other hand, you had the business community. This is real important. They also, the legitimate business people, wanted clarity. They wanted rules, fair to be sure, but they wanted regulation. And they also wanted, believe it or not, they wanted to be taxed. Now, why is that if you're a new industry? Because if you're taxed, that comes with taxation comes legitimacy, and that's what they wanted. They were not a legitimate business at that time. And so it was our job as a city council to create these news, to create a, a legislative and legal framework for them in which they could operate. And that's what we did. We tried to bring order to the chaos, and it was chaotic, I can assure you. To purchase medical marijuana, you have to get approval from physicians. I'll get to more in that later. We had problems now. So if you're thinking about doing this, do it right. Learn from us. We did not regulate the doctors. We did not set up a medical board, if you will. Any doctor could issue after about a five to ten minute conversation with a potential client or user they, could, they would say, yes, you qualify for a medical card in Colorado. There were physicians flying in from California, setting up, quote, a, their medical office, quote, in a motel, and getting the word out, and patients began to flock to get permission to seek this card. So now we have about 112,000 medical patients. Uh, 
The average age, 42. It, two thirds of the patients are male. But back to that doctor thing for a minute. 15% of the doctors were responsible for 75% of the patients. So you can see there was a little sub-industry that had grown up around marijuana. You'll see the medical marijuana, you'll see this throughout. Now, how do you qualify for a card? Well, it depends on what you tell your doctor. Can I get it when I fell off my skateboard? Does that qualify for a card? My wife is an editor of the Denver Post. For all you media folk, her first question was quite simple. Can I get a card for writer's block? So you get the idea. There were quite a few jokes around this whole physician getting a card process. You don't want to go through that. You want to do it right from the start. We did have families who were moving uh, to Colorado because of the debilitating problems they had with their children. CNN did a story on that. It became it was national news. Uh, it's really sad news. Uh, but that's what was happening. To be candid, I did not vote for Amendment 20. Didn't vote for it. I had my doubts. I have changed my position. I have moved on this issue. I have a very severe case of uh, plantar fasciitis. Has anybody had that? If you know what, on your feet? If you've had it, then you know how painful it is. And so I began to think, as an elected official, who am I to tell a potential patient that medical marijuana will not work for you? Who am I to become a roadblock in access to medical marijuana? It took a while, but I did change my position, and I'm glad I did, because I know that there are people, maybe some in this room, that have been helped. By, by the use of medical marijuana. Full prohibition are the states in white, medical marijuana or limited access to low THC are in the, the yellow states, uh, and you can follow the rest, the blue and the green. And you'll see that Colorado and Washington, we have both. We have medical marijuana, and we have recreational marijuana. We also had different tax structures. Medical marijuana in Denver and in Colorado is taxed at a lower rate than recreational marijuana. I compared the tax on recreational marijuana to a tax on liquor. We went high, but guess what? A liquor tax and a marijuana tax to me are what my mom would call sin taxes. You don't have to have them, right? So we tax them pretty high because we have to pay for all the folks who are going to regulate this new industry. And an aside to that, there is a lot of money to be made from both medical and recreational marijuana. Things that people don't even think about. Like, where are you going to grow this stuff? In Colorado, you cannot grow it outside. You cannot grow it outside. So you have to rent a warehouse. And in 2008, 9 and 10, especially after the Obama administration lifted their decree, there was a proliferation of medical uh, warehouses in Denver that were empty. And suddenly they became what we call grow facilities. And so you had to hire people. There are a lot of people in Denver that work for this industry. This is a grow facility here in Denver so you must, if you want to grow, if you want to get into business, you got to submit a lease or a deed. You have to show the city that you own the land in which you want to operate. you got to show a floor plan, a security plan, which is key. You have to have cameras. You have to have a safe. I'll get into that in a minute. you got to have a zoning permit, a sales tax license, an alarm system. And then we set up rules and regulations saying you cannot be, you cannot have a dispensary 
within a thousand feet of a school or a daycare facility or adjacent to each other. Can't do that. You cannot get a license if you've been convicted of a felony for the last five years. You have to have a clean record after five years. Really important. Keep the riffraff out of the business. You cannot consume a product in a store. You cannot consume it in public. And that's how the law was written. We have problems in that area, and so will you. It's part of being in the business. You go through a Colorado Bureau of Investigation background check. We want to be sure we have legitimate people in this business. And we have fees, and they're not cheap. Application, $2,000. Then you add that, $3,000 for a permit fee, which you have to renew annually. So, you know, you can see the dollar signs adding up. There is no specific zoning for growing marijuana. But we, you have to obey our rules in terms of distances. Marijuana, I know you're aware of this, is still a Scheduled One controlled substance under the Controlled Substance Act of 1970. That's part of the legal cloud that overhangs this industry in Denver and in Colorado. Because they believe, look at number two there, the drug has no current accepted medical uses and treatment in the U.S. It's contrary to what a lot of people think. But in terms of the federal government, they, don't, they believe it has no medical use. Because there's a lack of research for one thing, and guess why? You can't research it because you can't research with marijuana plants based on federal rules and regulations. So you, you're caught. You, you need to communicate to your residents, especially, especially your children, on what the law is. So we have posted these in all the dispensaries in Denver now. Know the law about marijuana use. See the bottom right-hand side? That's from Denver. I insisted on that. That would not be there without my insistence. But you've got to communicate to people what the rules are. You've got to be 21. But I'm not going to go through these. You can read those. Now, this is retail. We have the same rules uh, for medical. Banking. What a joke. Marijuana, whether you be retail or medical. You cannot have a normal banking relationship. You cannot take credit cards. You have to pay your employees in cash. You have to pay your utility bills in cash. And by the way, the utility companies are going to love this industry. Because to grow it, you need lights. You need fans. You use a lot of industry. So I'm having lunch with this uh, woman who just started a dis dispensary in Denver. And she brings in this large bag. And I called it kind of a, a feed bag. It was so big. And I said, yeah, I need this bag these days. I said, well, what's in there? And she said, well, today's payday. And this is the pay for all my employees. I said, well, how much is in there? She said, $86,000. And I said, well, let's go to Vegas. <laughs> Forget your employees. I've, and in Denver, you can pay your electric bill at food stores. King Supers, Safeway. And so one guy paid his utility bills for one month in a Safeway line, and it was $21,000. Now, he was standing there pulling out the $100 bills. H how stupid is that? This law can only be changed at the federal level. There's a bipartisan effort to do that from two representatives, congressional people from Colorado. I hope it is changed, and I hope that you did not fall into that category. Because if you want to create a situation that can lead to, to real serious problems, make it only a cash business. And that's what it is. 
You know, some people say that the biggest day in marijuana history is April 20th. You know all about that. Here's, in my judgment, as a political guy, this was the biggest day for marijuana in our country. This is a Gallup poll. This is a national poll. And it was October 2011. This is the first time that a majority of Americans supported the legalization of marijuana. This is a political movement. And it started in our country, and now we are seeing that it is expanding. And that's why, you, that's why you're here today. The media love this story. They love it. I don't know if you can read that. I have been on so many talk shows, CBS, ABC. I've been interviewed. In fact, someone, there was a, uh, a TV station from Costa Rica that interviewed me about seven years ago on this, pro on this issue. You know, in media, you call that, that you'll say that this story has legs. Marijuana is a caterpillar. This is something that you guys got to consider. Are you going to have pot clubs? Hopefully not with medical marijuana. Cannabis events, which drive me crazy. We have 420 on, in the middle of our downtown park. We have thousands of people, and they're blatantly disobeying our laws. You know, as a, a council member or as a legislator, I was also a Colorado legislator. We don't pass laws not to be passed. And there's no asterisk by our law on consumption that says, oh yeah, exclude 420 and exclude Civic Center. Big issue. When I look at this and how it started, there were really two groups of people. And one group were the stoners. This is what we call them. These are the folks who were selling dope illegally on the black market, selling it in schoolyards, in parks, and then you had the legitimate business people that saw what could happen to this industry in terms of being a moneymaker. And they would fight each other. And we as council members would stand back and watch them fight each other, sometimes at public hearings. And every now and then, a stoner, if you would, would get into business. They had no idea how to run a business. They never ran a business. They'd never pay taxes. They never fill out the forms. And so most of them went broke, fortunately. But now we have legitimate people in this industry, and many are my friends. But it's, it was just fascinating to watch. Westward is a... Um, Publication and this after going through all this, this is what they put on the cover. And rather than send out a Christmas card that year to my constituents, I sent that out. This is a Charlie Brown Christmas, Merry Marijuana. And then I had one guy who didn't like it a lot, but any of it. Hey guys, I'm gonna be on this panel. I know you have lots of questions and I look forward to meeting you and to working with you. Thank you.